All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of a Tech Talk, BoatingTechTalk.com. I'm Jeff Cote here at Pacific Yacht Systems, and thanks for tuning in. We've got a question from a fellow boater named Mark. Uh, Mark uh, states, Jeff, uh, my devices, primarily Victron, have case grounds. Both of my inverters have significant studs to connect to ground. Should I connect these case grounds and then wire them back to the DC ground bus in series? Do I need to connect them to switched or unswitched side of the DC ground switch? Okay. Well, first of all, in North America, you probably don't want to have, and I, we don't do that, not to say it can't be done, but it's uncommon to have a switch on the DC ground. So one word that's commonly used uh, for uh, grounds is the word common. And common means it's a place that all grounds connect to. So that would mean uh, a DC ground bus would also be connected to an AC ground bus. They have to. They can't be separate. And then you might have a bonding ground connected to that. You might have an RF ground connected to that. You might have a lightning ground connected to that. There's various types of grounds on a boat, but the most, let's say, popular ones are an AC ground, a DC ground, and uh, a bonding ground. You should absolutely avoid using series connection for grounds, meaning all grounds should be hub and spoke. If it fails, you lose only one spoke. You don't want to lose two spokes, right? Because once you put things in series, you're saying, oh, I'm going to connect one inverter to another inverter, and then I'm going to have that inverter connect to ground. It's tempting to do that, but you can't. Um, you're going to want to have each inverter connected to your grounding bus. And then you're also going to want to have both of your inverters connected to a unswitched grounding bus, meaning there's no situation where you're going to want to isolate a ground from an inverter and you don't need to have a switch to do that. So yes, and remember for boats, the code for AC grounds and DC grounds for inverter chargers is quite different than on land. And the rule is that the connector size to an inverter charger for the ground has to be a minimum of one size smaller than the biggest cable connected to the device. So for instance, if your inverter charger is connected with two watt wiring, which is about the size of a, a finger, you know, maybe an index finger or something like that, or a thumb, you know, maybe that's maybe four watt, but you know, a large cable is connected to your inverter charger. You're going to want to make sure that the chassis ground connection, so if, for instance, the connection is 2 watt, the chassis ground connection can only be one size smaller. So you go from 2 to 1. Now, I have get this asked all the time, Jeff, can I make it bigger? Absolutely. You can make it 2 watt all the way, but the code says it has to be only one size smaller, that's the minimum, than the largest cable, both AC and DC, connected to that device. So that's a good question from Mark. And by the way, if you're confused about grounds, welcome to the club. It took me a long time to figure it out. Uh, Nigel Calder has lots of good info on that. He's got a whole section in his book just about grounds. And take your time, digest it, read it, read it over again. And it took me years to really get it. It sounds trivial to all of us, all this stuff. And we are always hard on ourselves, telling ourselves that we should figure it out by now. But with electricity, it's about concepts and it's just being gentle to yourself and kind to yourself about uh, not understanding those things as quickly as maybe we all would have hoped. So great question from Mark and thanks for all of you for tuning in and safe boating. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking and thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.